one of the most important topic for the MRCP part 1 examination from the endocrinology section which is the acromegaly. Cardiovascular complication very important or I would say three star com important complication related to acromegaly. So that leaves us with the option D which is the polysomnography which is the test done in order to confirm a condition of obstructive sleep apnea one of the most important complications related to acromegaly or any weight gain. Hello, I'm Dr. Reva and I will be discussing about one of the most important topic for the MRCP part 1 examination from the endocrinology section which is the acromegaly. So the topics that I will be covering throughout my discussion for acromegaly is what exactly is acromegaly? Next up, we will discuss about the epidemiology of acromegaly, which means is there any particular population that can be affected with acromegaly particularly? Next up, the clinical features of acromegaly, complications associated with this condition, what are the investigations that we can do in order to detect acromegaly? What are the treatment options available for acromegaly? And the prognosis of acromegaly? So we will start with what exactly is acromegaly. As you can see from the picture, this is a very typical or characteristic facial feature of a person with acromegaly. One of the endocrinopathies where the growth hormone secretion is excessive in amounts and the growth hormone is coming from the anterior pituitary gland. However, in 95% of the cases, this is a pituitary tumor, there is some ectopic sources as well. So there is ectopic growth hormone releasing hormone coming from the carcinoid tumor. Also, it can be some ectopic sources like the pancreas. Now we will talk about the epidemiology of acromegaly. So UK prevalence is three people can be affected with acromegaly among a million of the people per year. So we can see this is not a very common condition. Again, there is no sex predilection for acromegaly. As you can see, both male-female ratio is one to one for acromegaly. And 5% of the acromegaly can be associated with some other condition like multiple endocrine neoplasia. Apart from that, some of the growth hormone secreting tumors also secrete prolactin. So a condition known as prolactinoma can be associated with acromegaly as well. So what are the clinical features of acromegaly? A very important topic to be discussed for this condition. So I have tried to keep this photo to remind you of some famous person that are diagnosed with this acromegaly condition. I'm not sure if you know this person. He's a very famous boxer. And his features are, uh, will help you to remember what are the acromegaly features. So as you can see, there is increase in the ring size or the shoe size. So a patient with acromegaly may present with large hand and large feet. Apart from that, there is coarsening of the facial feature. So that means there might be evidence of prognathism. So if you view a patient from the sideways, the lower jaw will be protruding. Apart from that, there might be some supraorbital ridge which is prominent in the forehead region. There might be coarsening of the facial feature. That means face will seem rough and tough. And upon opening of the mouth, you can appreciate that there might be presence of a large tongue and also widely spaced teeth. So macroglacia, wide spaced teeth, and there might be evidence of some skin tag, puffy lips, puffy cheek. Along with that, there might be evidence of acanthosis nigricans, which means blackening of the neck region and the armpit region, obstructive sleep apnea, 
So that means patient might be having some sleeping abnormalities because of the increased weight and the macroglossia causing pressure on the windpipe. So normally disrupting the normal sleep cycle. Features of goiter might be present in acromegaly as well because the growth hormone is an anabolic hormone and it can stimulate the growth hormone sensitive tissues in the body. Another important aspect is the proximal myopathy, aches and pains in the body and pseudogout. Another important characteristic for acromegaly is the carpal tunnel syndrome which occurs because of some pressure effect from the increased weight gain on the median nerve and signs of pituitary mass which can present either in the form of headache which is worse after bending forward coughing sneezing dull aching headache which is worse particularly in the early morning there might be associated nausea vomiting and vision blurring another important aspect we should know is the pituitary tumor or the pituitary gland sits sits right on top of the optic chiasma and the optic chiasma is the crossing pathway of the optic nerve coming from each individual retina so that if the pituitary tumor is large enough to compress over the optic chiasma it can cause bitemporal hemianopia which is an important distinguishing feature for the pituitary tumor so mass effect is an important characteristic feature for acromegaly as well So what are the complications related to acromegaly? In this picture, you can see there are so many complications occurring. The important ones are, first up, soft tissue complication. So that means there might be enlargement in different parts of the body, not just the hands and feet and the face, but at the same time, it can cause organomegaly as well. If it involves the heart, there is chance of developing cardiomyopathy and from cardiomyopathy, there is increased risk of heart failure. Apart from that, there are some metabolic complication. For example, impaired fasting glucose and impaired glucose tolerance can lead to development of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Apart from that, there is also increased evidence of high blood pressure and dyslipidemia associated with acromegaly bones and joint complication so enlargement of the bones of the limbs either in the upper limbs or the lower limbs it can cause pain it can cause pseudo gout it can also cause pressure effect on different nerves causing entrapment neuropathy particularly the carpal tunnel syndrome it can also cause osteoarthritis and osteopenia because of the reduced protein and the mineral content of the bone Cardiovascular complication, very important, or I would say three star com important complication related to acromegaly. So there is increased evidence of biventricular hypertrophy, increased evidence of hypertension, diastolic heart failure, systolic heart failure as well, ventricular hypertrophy, and it can also cause arrhythmia or irregular heartbeat. Apart from that, there are also some respiratory complication and one of the most important respiratory complication is the obstructive sleep apnea. So this is episodes of apneic or hypoapneic spells during a normal sleep cycle interrupting the normal sleep cycle and the patient will usually wake up at the night because of this interruption. And if a patient is having some sort of partner, he or she might complain of the affected people will be doing uh, multiple snoring. And obstructive sleep apnea patients tend to feel morning time dizziness or morning or daytime sleepiness. And this can be particularly dangerous if the affected person is a heavy lorry driver or important in uh, or involved in any relevant job. So if they fall in those type of risky job, it can be very endangering for his and others life as well. And apart from that, some endocrine complication such as multinodular thyroid goiter, 
thyrotoxicosis and hyperparathyroidism. These are the common complications associated with acromegaly. So what are the important signs of active disease? These active signs will prompt you starting treatment as soon as possible. So clinically, there are four signs that can help you understanding whether the person is having active acromegaly or not. And those are skin tags, active sweating, uncontrolled or high blood pressure, and evidence of ankle edema. So what are the investigations that are available for detecting acromegaly? So for part one examination, it's quite important to know about the initial screening. And along with that, you should know about the confirmatory screening. So the initial screening can be done in suspected acromegaly in centers where OGTT is not possible. So the insulin-like growth factor, here you can see, this will be raised in case of acromegaly initially. However, in order to confirm the condition of acromegaly, you should go for OGTT or the oral glucose tolerance test. So normally, after giving a glucose load, the growth hormone level is usually suppressed. In, however, in case of the acromegaly, if the growth hormone level after giving a bolus dose of glucose is not suppressed less than 2 nanogram per ml, then this is thought to be positive test for acromegaly. The test for acromegaly is going for an oral glucose tolerance test or the OGTT. And after giving a 75 gram of glucose load, usually in normal individual, the growth hormone level will be suppressed. However, in case of the acromegaly, if it is not suppressed less than 2 nanogram per ml, in that case, we can consider that acromegaly is positive. However, there are some several conditions where the acromegaly test can be falsely negative or in these conditions, for example, pregnancy, stress, puberty, anorexia nervosa, type 2 diabetes mellitus, chronic kidney disease, and chronic liver disease, the test can be falsely positive. Further on, we can go for an MRI to localize the pituitary tumor. And if the patient is complaining of visual field defect, then we can go for the formal visual perimetry. So furthermore investigation that you should consider for patients with acromegaly is the nerve conduction study. Nerve conduction study is considered when a patient is having features suggestive of entrapment neuropathy such as carpal tunnel syndrome. Sleep studies, this will help detect features of obstructive sleep apnea. So we can either go for the polysomnography for confirmation and the additional test for sleep studies would be oxygen saturation by the bedside as well as spirometry which will show restrictive form of defect in case of obstructive sleep apnea moving on we should go for moving on we should go for an ecg echocardiogram chest x-ray peer view to detect if there is any features suggestive of cardiomegaly or to detect if there is any features suggestive of cardiomyopathy. Next up is RBS or the blood sugar level, serum urea electrolyte and x-ray of the involved joint can also be considered depending upon the patient's symptom. And anterior pituitary hormone assay, for example, detecting the levels of TSH or the thyroid stimulating hormone follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and ACTH or the adrenocorticotrophic hormone. So all these hormone levels can be abnormal in the face of a pituitary tumor, which is why it's very important to check the other pituitary hormonal panel as well. And last but not the least, ultrasound of the whole abdomen because there can be evidence of hepatomegaly and uh, other organomegaly because of the excessive growth hormone and colonoscopy because there is increased evidence of colon cancer in patients with acromegaly and usually 
acromegaly patient, if they're complaining of bleeding per rectum, you should have high clinical suspicion of colon cancer. And in that case, you can consider invasive tests like colonoscopy. Now we will discuss about the treatment of acromegaly. First and foremost important treatment modality is surgery. And this type of surgery is usually done via the transphenoidal approach. The incision can be given underneath the upper lip or along the philtrum line, or the incision can also be given through the nasal approach as well. Apart from that, if a patient is still having signs symptoms suggestive of acromegaly or in refractory cases, as an adjunct, we can consider radiotherapy as well. Next up is the somatostatin analog. However, somatostatin analogs such as octreotide or lanreotide, they do have some side effects, usually causing nausea, vomiting, tummy pain, even flatulence, as well as there is increased evidence of impaired glucose tolerance and increased incidence of gallstone in patients receiving somatostatin analogs. Next up is the growth hormone antagonist. Next up is the growth hormone antagonist. Another name for growth hormone antagonist is the pigvisumat. So this is actually uh, formulated by using recombinant DNA technology and this particular uh, synthetic analog can work against the growth hormone antagonist. Next up is, it's very important to ensure the proper follow-up in patients with acromegaly by doing yearly visual field assessment. At the same time, yearly growth hormone level, checking the insulin-like growth factor one, doing the OGTT, checking the visual field and vascular assessment and checking the BMI level and comparing with old photographs. These are the parameters that are usually done on an annual basis to see if there is any recurrence of the pituitary tumor because pituitary tumors can be refractory sometimes. So what's the prognosis for acromegaly will look like? <clears throat> Most of the time after surgery, it might return to normal. However, the facial features sometimes tend not to go back to normal. So in that case, there is scope for cosmetic surgery. Apart from that, in 16% of the patients with acromegaly receiving the somatostatin analogs will develop full-blown type 2 diabetes mellitus. Along with that, 13% of the patients with or without somatostatin analog, uh, even after the surgery, might still have the full-blown type 2 diabetes mellitus, which will be for lifelong. Now we will discuss some of the commonly encountered patterns of acromegaly questions. Question number one. I want you to read carefully on the stem. A 37 year old male comes to the emergency department with sudden worsening of his headache, which he has been experiencing for the last three months. His deterioration of the headache took place for the last three days. And he is also complaining of double vision and vomited twice. He's a known case of acromegaly confirmed by OGTT and MRI of the brain. He was due for an elective transsphenoidal surgery next month. A CT of the brain shows at this point, there is a large area of hypodense region within the pituitary tumor with loss of vascularity in pituitary gland. What could be the possible cause for worsening of his headache? So the options are pituitary tumor has increased in size. Option two, mass effect with cerebral edema. Option three, CN is infection such as tuberculoma. Option D, pituitary apoplexy. Option E, stress related headache for the upcoming brain surgery. Now. This is actually quite a tricky question because acromegaly has already been diagnosed. This is quite a tricky question because acromegaly is already confirmed.
So it must be something to do with complication of acromegaly. Now let's try to focus on the keywords from the stem. So the person is having for the last three months features of raised ICP. However, within a very short period of time, there is sudden worsening of his ongoing symptom. Not only that, he's also complaining of double vision. Okay, now we have done a CT scan after coming to the emergency department, which is showing a large area of hypodense region. So in acute time period, when we do a CT scan, and it shows there is some form of hypodense region, it usually indicates there is some sort of infarction going on, which is further evidenced by loss of vascularity in the pituitary gland. Now from the options, we will try to rule out the wrong options. There is no mention in the size of the brain tumor here. So we can rule out option A. Number two, in a CT scan with mass effect with cerebral edema, there has to be evidence of midline shifting. As there is no such mention of that, so we can rule out option B as well. There is no features suggestive of tuberculosis, tuberculosis risk factor, such as there is no features of cranial nerve palsy, except for the double vision. However, there is no generalized symptoms suggestive of tuberculosis, such as fever, weight loss, anorexia, chest pain, breathing difficulty, or hemoptysis. So in that case, we can rule out the CNS infection, such as tuberculoma. And of course, with physical evidence of double vision, as well as on the CT scan, there is some abnormality going on. This cannot be something physiological, such as stress related. So we can skip that as well. So this is how we can come to our diagnosis of pituitary apoplexy, which is the correct option. So the option is option D. So in case of a pituitary tumor, diagnosed pituitary tumor, if there is sudden worsening of the headache and sudden worsening of the vision, along with that, if there is features of raised ICP all on a sudden and complaining of double vision, you might keep your clinical suspicion of pituitary apoplexy. Now we will discuss about our second question. I want you to read carefully the stem. A 42 year old woman with acromegaly came to the medical outpatient clinic with the complaints of early morning headache, which is dull in nature and associated with daytime sleepiness and fatigue. <clears throat> On query, her partner reveals that she is a loud snorer. Lately, she has been complaining of gaining more weight than previous and tends to fall asleep while doing household chores. So this type of stem is very much suggestive of obstructive sleep apnea, which is one of the respiratory complications of acromegaly. Now let's look at our further question. <clears throat> so the question is, which of the following test is confirmatory for the above mentioned condition? So we are looking for a confirmatory test to detect not acromegaly but one of the complication which is the OSA in terms of acromegaly. So our options are OGTT. We can definitely rule that out. So we can rule out OGTT because it's a test that is done to detect or confirm acromegaly not obstructive sleep apnea. MRI of the brain. The patient is having respiratory symptoms. So there is no role of MRI. Furthermore, the patient has already been diagnosed with acromegaly. So we can rule this out as well. The next three options are slightly confusing. There is option C of arterial blood gas analysis, option D, polysomnography, option E, bedside oxygen saturation and spirometry. Actually, all these tests are done to diagnose a condition of obstructive sleep apnea. However, which test is done to confirm the diagnosis of OSA? That's what the question is all about. So ABG will reveal that the patient might be having some pattern of respiratory failure, but this will not be confirmatory. So we can rule out ABG. 
A bedside oxygen saturation and spirometry will also indicate that there is some form of respiratory pathology. And in case of the obstructive sleep apnea, bedside oxygen saturation can be normal. However, when the patient falls asleep, especially around the stage 3 and 4, there tends to be a fall in the oxygen saturation. Along with that, a spirometry will show restrictive form of defect. So this will only aid in the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea, but it's not itself uh, conclusive enough to diagnose this condition. So we can rule that out as well. <clears throat> so that leaves us with the option. So that leaves us with the option D, which is the polysomnography, which is the test done in order to confirm a condition of obstructive sleep apnea one of the most important complications related to acromegaly or any weight gain. Now we will discuss about another question related to acromegaly. Which of the following condition is not typically associated with acromegaly? This is actually a straightforward question. However, the options can be tricky. I'll show you. Option A, prolactinoma. Option B, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A. Option C, hypertension. Option D, proximal myopathy. Option E, carpal tunnel syndrome. So here, this is actually tricky in a sense. I'll show you how. Prolactinoma is a condition that is associated with acromegaly. So we can rule that out. Hypertension is actually one of the complications related to acromegaly. So we can rule that out as well. Option D, proximal myopathy. This is also seen in acromegaly, so we can rule that out. Carpal tunnel syndrome, one of the complications related to acromegaly, thereby we can rule that out. We are looking for something that is not typically associated with acromegaly and the option is multiple endocrine neoplasia. And the option is multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A because the multiple endocrine neoplasia that is associated with acromegaly is men type 1, not type 2A, which is why this is one of the condition which is not typically associated with acromegaly and the answer will be men 2A.